My life before Islam was like living in a shade of darkness. I had three concerns in my life. And my main concern was wine, women, and song. It meaning including any alcohol. How many women could I have? And one of the things about having women was could you meet a woman and take her to bed the same night? This was my main concern. This is all I was focusing on. I was living in a place called Los Angeles, California, and it was like the cameras from Hollywood was on us all the time. I had beautiful clothes. I had beautiful shoes. I had a Cadillac. All of it was all well and wrong. So my number one Akita or whatever my faith was in was wine, women, and song. My acceptance of Islam starts, I guess, from a, from a childhood perspective. I was raised pretty much in a, and, and made to go to Sunday school every day. Every Sunday, I'm sorry, every Sunday. After becoming an adult, um, something seemed to be missing in my life. Like I said, I had an excellent job, I was getting excellent pay, but the one thing that was missing in my life was I didn't have any purpose. Someone introduced me to Islam, and in the Holy Book of Islam, the Quran, it is said, Allah says, that I only created you to worship me. So this began to fulfill the purpose that I thought was missing in my life. My secular life was excellent. I had no problem with that whatsoever. But it was a spiritual void that was there. The Quran and the Sunnah or the tradition and the Sharia or the law from Quran and the tradition is living proof that God created the soul to worship him and the body to fulfill that obligation. To live my life with this purpose and I feel completely satisfied with the way I'm doing my life at this time. The day I accepted Islam was on Eid al Fitr, uh, the celebration of the Eid after the, after the fast of Ramadan in which I had just learned how to recite Ayat al-Qudsi. I spent the whole month of Ramadan learning how to recite this particular Ayat. And before I recited the ayat is when I took my shahada. And once taking the shahada and then reciting the ayat, and after the little program, after the program was over with, I just felt a closeness to the people I was around. I felt, uh, they felt close to me and I felt closer to them. Uh, Allah began to open up more avenues for me. I was single at the time. It wasn't much longer after that when I got a wife. I also had never made pilgrimage. Once I made the pilgrimage, I, get, I got to see humanity at its best, submitting to the will of Allah. And this is what Islam has done for me, the difference in day, night and day. Now let's discuss some common misconceptions about the religion or the way of life of Islam. Now I have to admit there are some misconceptions and we're here to try to uh, do away with those misconceptions and make clear to you that which is Islam and that which is not Islam. So let's start and dive right into it. The first misconception we like to talk about is the fact that some people say Islam is a religion of only the Arab people or those people who want to be Arabs. Well, I have to tell you, I, I'm not Arab. And only 18% of the Muslims worldwide are Arab. Now, the best of creation, the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, yes, he was indeed an Arab. But I am not. But he was sent to all mankind as a mercy from the Creator. Now what does that mean? This means that if only 18% of the Muslims worldwide are Arabs, it really wouldn't stand to reason for people to say that that means that it's only a religion for the Arabs. Because then that would mean you'd have to cut out all of the American Muslims, all of the Indonesian Muslims, all of the Pakistani Muslims, all of the Muslims in the United Kingdom and worldwide. So 18% of the Muslims worldwide are Arab and the other 82% are all nationalities all combined. So I hope that that puts to rest the idea that only Arabs are Muslims. To bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship as a God except Allah. You're asking me, you're asking yourself, why should I? 
Why should I be a Muslim? What's in it for me? I'll explain to you. You see, a boss who gives you money to eat, uh, money, a large salary, and if you get into some trouble of some sort, he comes to your aid and assistance. So therefore, if he asks you to do something, you will be the first one to be ready and willing to do it. How much more so the one who created you? Because Allah is Al-Khaliq, He is the Creator. Meaning, He has created everything without exception and there was no partner involved in His creation. He is the Creator. He is a razaq He is the sustainer. Every dollar that you have in your pocket, every dirham, every real, everything you have in your pocket that you spend, it comes from Allah, the Creator. Anything good that you have, know that it comes from the Creator. He is the one who grants His servants everything. So therefore, when we say that there's nothing worthy of worship as a God except for Allah, Allah who is a Samia, He hears everything. He hears what I am saying. He hears what you are saying. He hears what everybody in the earth is saying all at the same time. So with this in mind, this gives us the concept that is known as Tawheed or the oneness of Allah because it is only Allah and no one else that grants this beautiful, beautiful way of life that grants these gifts that no one else can grant to us. So this is the reason why we shouldn't worship anyone other than Allah because no one gives us what Allah gives us. And as for the second part of this statement, Muhammad Rasulullah, I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad was Allah's slave, servant, and messenger. Now this Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was the one who lived over 1400 years ago. And not the Muhammad that you may know today, or someone else who may be claiming to be a prophet, but this is Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, from Arabia, who passed away 1400 years ago, who brought to us this beautiful way of life, he brought to us the Qur'an, and he brought us the way we should worship our Lord. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. The second pillar 